Spoilers inbound. Turn back now if you don't want to be spoiled on anything Undertale or Deltarune. You have been warned. So I do just want to get one thing out of the way real quick. I know that when everyone talks about an Undertale rep, their mind immediately goes to everybody's favorite pun happy skeleton, Sans. And while I probably will do a video on him in the future if enough people request him, I just personally don't think that he's all that well suited to be a Smash fighter. Now don't get me wrong, I love Sans. He's my favorite character in the game, and everyone wants him in for a reason. And I'm certain that he is very capable of being a fighter, but people seem to forget about one glaring flaw with the character. He's lazy. His favorite thing to do is literally nothing. He won't even fight you in the game unless you literally kill everybody in the underground and he has absolutely no choice but to stop you. Otherwise, he won't even lift the distal phalanx. Maybe some other time. But for now, I'd rather do a character that I think makes much more sense to be a fighter for Smash, and that is the Fallen Human, better known as Frisk. At first glance, Frisk is just a normal child. But upon falling into the underground at the beginning of the game, they gain the power of determination, which allows them to continue on their journey and make the choices they choose no matter what. Just so long as the player themselves continues to play the game. Meta, right? So, with that said, Frisk would be a rather... complicated character. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to explain that right now by going over Frisk's gimmick before anything else, as their gimmick is literally what would determine how players choose how to have Frisk function. Frisk's gimmick would be the very moral compass that encompasses the entirety of Undertale's gameplay as a whole, and that would be the ability to either be neutral, pacifist, or genocidal. Just like in the game, literally every action the player has Frisk do would affect how Frisk can play, effectively turning them into a type of multi-tier character. There would be what can be called a morality bar above Frisk's character icon that starts out empty at the beginning of the match. This bar shows what affiliation Frisk is during the fight, being able to be neutral, pacifist, or genocidal. Frisk will always start a match as neutral, and doing various moves and actions will have the bar fill to either the left or to the right, with the left representing pacifism and the right representing genocide. The types of actions and attack that the player has Frisk do will either fill the bar to the left or right. To fill the bar towards pacifism, the player simply needs to be a pacifist. The bar will naturally and slowly fill towards the pacifist side by itself so long as the player doesn't attack. Landed special moves will also fill the bar towards pacifism, as the special moves are all different types of acts. I'll talk about more of those later. The basic attacks, on the other hand, are all just that. Attacks. And landing those attacks will fill the bar closer to genocide. So in short, doing nothing and special moves for pacifist, basic attacks, and pummeling after grabbing for foe for genocide. Throwing doesn't actually do anything, but it can be helpful for pacifism if you want to keep your foes away from you. This bar will really only matter once it's filled up completely to one side. Otherwise, Frisk will always remain in their default neutral moveset. However, once the bar is completely filled to a side, this will change Frisk into a completely new character. And this is a permanent change as well. Once Frisk changes to full pacifist or full genocide, they'll remain like that for the remainder of the fight, even if they're KO'd. And they cannot revert back to neutral or attempt to change to the other affinity. Actions have consequences, after all. Whew, that was a meaty explanation, but necessary to avoid confusion. Now then, I'll go ahead and begin to going over Frisk's moves, but since they have three different modes, they technically have three different movesets as well. So I'll go over each of them one at a time, starting with their neutral moveset. Frisk's primary weapon while in neutral will be their stick, the beginning weapon they set out with an Undertale. They'll have a very basic moveset with rather slow movement, two jumps, and no movement options. Oh, and just for funsies, whenever Frisk shields or uses any of the various dodges, their soul appears during the animations. Frisk's jab will be a single vertical swing with their stick, swung in a way that matches how it looks when attacking with the stick and Undertale. Their dash attack will have them run forwards while frantically swinging their stick forwards. The best thing to compare this to is the attack that the character Adeline from the Kirby series does with her paintbrush. Their side tilt would be a quick horizontal stick swing with some decent range. The up tilt would be an overhead stick swing from front to back, similar to Isabelle's up tilt. Their down tilt would be a quick low to the ground stick poke, similar to Marth's down tilt. 
Frisk Side Smash would be a quick lunging punch while wearing the Tough Glove, an equipable item that can be found in Undertale for Frisk. Their Up Smash could have them swing the burnt pan overhead multiple times from side to side in a panic. And for their Down Smash, it can be an attack where magical spears emerge from the ground and stab upwards all around Frisk. Frisk would be panicking while trying to dodge these spears, just like how Duck Hunt will freak out whenever the Zapper shoots around them for any of their smash attacks. This attack is in reference to when the Real Knight Undyne attacked Frisk in the game with their magical spears. Ugh, that whole section kills my anxiety. For aerials, Frisk's neutral air could have them spin horizontally at a slight angle with their stick out. Their forward air could be kind of like Villager and Isabelle's forward airs with their slingshot. But instead of a slingshot, they could throw the empty gun straight forwards. Yes, you heard me right. There's a weapon in Undertale called the Empty Gun. Frisk doesn't shoot with it, they just throw the actual gun at the enemies. It's hilarious. Their back air could be the exact same thing, just, well, they're in the opposite direction. And their up and down airs could also be a ranged attack where Frisk throws an item. But instead of the Empty Gun, they throw the Torn Notebook, where they're going straight up vertically for the up air, and straight down vertically for the down air. Frisk would have a small grab range using both of their arms. Their pummel would have them headbutt the opponent. Their forward throw would have them just pathetically push the foe forwards. Their back throw would have them just throw them backwards. Up throw could just have them throw them upwards. And down throw would just have them throw them on the ground, slightly popping them into the air. Very basic and boring throws, I'm aware, but Frisk is just a basic kid after all. Now for Frisk's special moves. And since the basic attacks incorporated Frisk's fight command, the special moves will be incorporated in the other command, and that's acting. For quick context, fight in Undertale is what allowed Frisk to attack enemies, fairly straightforward. But the act command is what allowed Frisk to interact with enemies, and possibly end fights peacefully without hurting anybody. For the neutral special, it could be the act ignore. This move would be utilized as a type of combo breaker. It would have Frisk make a pouty pose for a split second. If hit during this pose, Frisk would negate the knockback they would have taken from the opponent, as well as half the damage they would have taken. This would also push the foe away for a short distance, allowing Frisk to get some distance if needed. This move, though, will leave Frisk vulnerable if they use it, but then aren't hit during the pout animation. Their side special would be... Flirt. Yes. Flirt. Frisk is a pretty forward child if they want to be. Flirt would have Frisk blow a small kiss that shoots a short-ranged heart-shaped projectile. Just for kicks, this heart would look just like Frisk's soul, cause why not? This projectile is very weak, and only does very small flinching damage at most. However, using this attack will send Frisk a fair distance opposite of the direction the kiss was blown. Frisk's up special would be the act Pose. Frisk would do a random pose, and posing would emit a small light that could knock foes away a short distance. It would also send Frisk upwards if used in the air. Frisk can pose two times in the air before going into freefall. The poses they would do would also mimic the poses that we see done by Metaton EX during the fight with him. Because we all know that Metaton is an excellent role model for children to copy, right? Oh yes! And finally, for Frisk's down special, they could FLEX IT! <clears throat> Sorry. They would use the flex command, and they would act as a type of counter. Frisk would literally just flex their arms, and if hit during this animation, the foe will be stunned in place, allowing Frisk to either attack or get away. Alright, and that does it for Frisk's neutral moveset. But we ain't done here. Like I said at the beginning, this is just the moveset for Frisk while they're in their neutral mode. Frisk has two more movesets, one while in pacifist mode, and the other in genocide mode. So it's time to get into those. Let's start with the pacifists. Pacifist mode would be obtained when Frisk's morality meter fills up completely to the left side. To recap, pacifism is built automatically over time the longer Frisk goes without attacking, or so long as they don't land any of their basic attacks anyway. And it will fill up faster if Frisk continues to successfully land their axe, the special attacks. While in pacifist mode, Frisk becomes much faster and can jump higher than a neutral mode. On top of that, they gain access to the option of crawling and an additional jump, bringing them to three jumps total. The entire advantage of pacifist mode allows Frisk to be just that, a pacifist. Every single one of Frisk's basic moves are outright changed to a bunch of other various acts. These attacks are much weaker than before, but they all have various effects, allowing Frisk to quickly end each confrontation they come across, as if they were sparing the opponent. The replaced jab for pacifist mode will be the talk command. 
This will act as a makeshift rapid jab, where a barrage of cartoony speech bubbles appear that can cause small flinching damage. Just like how talking can sometimes slow enemies down in Undertale. Their new dash would have them running for a hug, but then tripping and falling. Their side tilt would be the command shoo, where they do a shooing motion with their hands. It has short range, but deals incredible launching power. Want to get someone away from you? Just shoo them away. Up tilt would be cheer, where Frisk jumps up and down cheering. Their whole body has a hitbox, but it has short range. Down tilt would be pet. A little white dog will appear out of nowhere sleeping on the ground next to Frisk, and they'll start petting it. Aww. This will make the dog's tail wag furiously, launching any foe who's hit by it. What a wholesome attack. Their side and up smashes will be just as wholesome, however. Remember the lesser dog? The goodest of boys whose neck gets longer the more you pet them? Well, one will appear next to Frisk, and they will pet this good boy, causing their neck to elongate and be used as a long-range attack. The side smash will have the head go horizontally, and the up smash will have the head go vertically. The longer you charge this move for, the more Frisk will pet the lesser dog, causing their neck to stretch even farther. These attacks don't hit very hard and don't send opponents very far when they're at low damage, but they'd be great get away from me moves. As in, get away from me, I want to pet this pup, how dare you interrupt my pup pet time! Well, whenever you're done petting the pup, you can act like one for passive at Frisk's down smash. It would be the command, roll around. Frisk would roll around in the ground, flailing a bit and splashing mud everywhere. The attack deals small damage and has good launch power, and if the mud hits the opponent, it'll cause their movements to be slippery for a short while. For all of Pacifist Frisk's aerials, they would all effectively turn into a variation of Frisk's up special, and would be a different pose for each command. They would all work just like how their up special works, where upon their use, Frisk emits a quick light that knocks foes away, while at the same time, gaining some vertical height. But the vertical height can only be gained once from any of the air attacks while airborne, so using any of the aerials again after gaining height from them the first time won't gain any height at all. Passivist mode Frisk will grab by embracing the foe with a hug. Aww. Their pummel will have them squeeze hard, giving the foe a bear hug. Their forward throw and backward throw would both have Frisk playfully spin the foe like a helicopter, then toss them in the appropriate direction. Their up throw would have Frisk hug the foe so hard that they slip out of their arms and fly upwards, and their down throw would have Frisk jump onto the opponent and hug them so hard that they make big damage before slipping out of Frisk's arms. All of those pacifist special attacks are enhanced versions of the previous special attacks. Ignore becomes Hope, a command that Frisk gets while fighting Azrael during the final battle of the pacifist route. It has the same effects as Ignore, but the button can be held down, and Frisk's active frames for this special can last up to 5 seconds, allowing for a much more reliable means of pulling this move off. It also has a lot less end lag if it fails to connect. Flirt becomes Fetch. Now, instead of a heart, Frisk throws their unequipped stick, and a dog appears out of nowhere and retrieves the stick, then pounces Frisk once they bring it back. This mechanically works similar to Flurry, but now the projectile acts like a makeshift boomerang attack, and the pounce from the dog sends Frisk back even farther than the Flirt did. Pose now becomes Stylish Pose, and it works just like it did before, but now it can be used up to five times, and it won't even put Frisk in the free fall. And Flex now becomes Hard Flex. It deals double the damage than the normal Flex does, and it has active frames that last even longer. On top of that, Frisk would now comedically float into any direction that the player chooses. A reference to the enemy Aaron in Undertale. A seahorse looking jock that Frisk can have flexing contests with. But Aaron could flex too much to the point where they just float away, ending the battle. The added float is great if you can predict the encounter in Edgard, adding to Pacifist Frisk's already insane recovery options. And that's it for the pacifist mode! Now, let's get to the right side of that bar. The much more brutal... Genocide mode. As stated prior, the bar fills towards genocide when Frisk uses basic attacks and their pummel with their grab. It will also fill up a good chunk if Frisk can land a KO with their basic attack. When genocide mode is obtained, Frisk's stick is then replaced by the knife and all of their attacks become much stronger and faster, all dealing high damage and launch power. This does come at the cost of recovery and range though, effectively turning Frisk into a version of Little Mac. All of Frisk's attacks while in genocide mode look the same for the most part, just with a knife instead of a stick. Just keep in mind that all of these attacks are way faster than before. Their jab is the vertical knife swing, but it's much faster and can be spammed. The dash attack is running forward while crazily swinging the knife around- OH GOD SOMEONE STOP THAT KID BEFORE THEY POKE SOMEONE'S EYE OUT! 
The side tilt is a quick horizontal knife swing, up tilt is an overhead knife swing from back to front, and down tilt is a low to the ground knife stab. For the side smash, even the tough glove is replaced with the knife. It is the strongest weapon after all. Frisk will do a straight lunge with the knife. Up smash has Frisk swing the knife overhead numerous times like a crazy person, and down smash will have spears stabbed from the ground all around Frisk, but instead of them being Undyne's magic spears, it'll be Sans's bone spears. The Genocide neutral area will have Frisk spin in place with the knife out. The other areas will however no longer be long range attacks. They will all just use the knife for these attacks instead of throwing an object. Forward air would have Frisk stab forward a couple of times, similar to Ridley's forward air. Would these two get along, or do you think they just try to kill each other? Questions for later. Back air would have Frisk do a quick stab backwards, similar to Ganondorf's back air. Another duo who might get along and or kill each other. Huh. Anyway. Up air would be an overhead knife swing, and down air would be a downwards flying kick, similar to Simon's down air. For the genocide grab, Frisk would only grab with one arm. Their pummel would be a headbutt, their forward throw would have them elbow the foe forwards, their back throw would have them kick the foe backwards, up throw would have them headbutt them into the air, and down throw would... Oh. <laughs> Just like how the basic attack went through a drastic change for pacifist mode, the specials would also go through a drastic change for genocide mode. The Genocide Neutral Special would be a Tornado Knife Spin, similar to Meta Knight's Neutral Special, but it gains no vertical height or really goes any distance in the air for that matter. It can be moved while on the ground, and this attack can keep going for a while while the button is held down, but it will slow down after a bit. The new Side Special would be a Knife Charge, similar to the Sword Charge attack that the Mii Swordsman can get. It sends Frisk forwards a considerable distance with their knife sticking forward, but the distance of this attack is greatly reduced if used in the air. Up Special would be a Multi-Stab Attack, it would work like a type of rapid jab that goes upwards above Frisk. This attack can be used indefinitely so long as the button is held down. And the down special would be a knife counter attack, which is your basic run of the mill counter that you see in Smash. Oh, and for kicks, if the counter is successful, a little happy face icon will appear above their head, the same one that appears during the later portion of the genocide route when the player encounters a monster after killing enough of them. You homicidal maniacs. Now, with all of that out of the way, let me voice some concerns that I know a good amount of you may have after I explain to the pacifist and genocide movesets. Pacifist I know looks very annoying to deal with. A moveset that practically guarantees safe recovery and is hard to land hits on? Just ban Frisk now! And genocide with a very boring looking moveset and terrible recovery? Pfft, just throw that at bottom tier. But hear me out on this. With how the morality bar is set up, even if you choose to purposefully fill the bar one way to get one of these modes during the fight, it will still take a good while before it fully fills to one side. Let's say you are playing a 3 stock match with a 7 minute time limit. You more than likely won't obtain one of these modes until you are about 5 minutes in with one stock left apiece so long as both players are equal in skill. So generally you'll be playing a neutral mode for a majority of the time anyway. So you may ask, what's the point then? Well it all has to do with how you want to deal with a match depending on your playstyle and even how you can change the outcome towards the end, as well as how to deal with the other opponent and the character they play to turn the tide of battle in your favor, or just to make the battle go in a way that you're most comfortable with. Pacifist is very safe and easy to use. You're pretty guaranteed to land hits and to be able to get away if you need to. Only problem with it is that landing those hits won't be very rewarding, and it will take a bit before you can land kills. So you'll need to be a bit more tactical, just like how you need to be when you're playing the Pacifist run in Undertale. Genocide mode, on the other hand, is a lot more straightforward. Just attack. Fighting an Undertale can definitely be seen as the faster means of dealing with battles, and by the time you begin initiating the genocide mode, you're pretty strong, and are one-shotting pretty much every enemy, so it makes sense that genocide mode would be very strong. That said, of course the moveset for genocide mode might look a little boring, so it was grinding literally every monster in Undertale just to get the genocide one at all. On top of that, being in the Genocide run does have consequences for your game. So in Smash, your consequence for getting Genocide mode is the loss of your recovery. Just like how you can never really recover the true pacifist run after getting Genocide mode, you monster. But hey, you can kill things faster now, so have fun with that. Overall, think of it like this. The pacifist run can be seen as the easier run, so pacifist mode is easier to use. Whereas the Genocide road is a super difficult run. Therefore, Genocide mode would be harder to use. Of course, you don't need to go Pacifist or Genocide. 
You can just manipulate things to stay in neutral, just like you can in Undertale. It's all dependent on player preference, and the options are there. Again, just like in Undertale. In any which case, I think I've said my piece about this giant moveset as a whole. Let's go ahead and finish things up. For the final smash, it could be the very options that you're given in Undertale. Will you fight, or will you show mercy and spare? When you activate this final smash, it would activate a quick cinematic that would have Frisk floating in front of the fight and spare buttons. When you're in neutral mode, you can then choose between the two buttons. If you choose fight, it deals large damage to all opponents within a fixed distance to Frisk, but doesn't send them very far. It will also fill the morality bar towards genocide by a good chunk. If you choose spare, it will launch opponents who are very close by very far, possibly KOing if their damage is already high enough but it doesn't deal a whole lot of damage. And of course, choosing Spare will feel the morality bar a good chunk towards pacifism. Now, if you're in pacifist mode and you use your final smash, Frisk will use Save, which is what's used during the final boss of the pacifist run. It will launch all opponents on screen even farther than what neutral Spare can do, pretty much guaranteeing KOs even if they're at low percentages. And the genocide mode final smash defaults to Fight, having Frisk deal insane amounts of damage to all opponents on the screen, and will automatically KO them if they're at a high enough damage percent, just like Ridley and Zelda's final smashes. On to the alternate colors. The first color would have Frisk in a green shirt with a single yellow stripe, in reference to Kara, the first human to fall into the underground who died. And don't worry, no jump scares today. The second color would give Frisk a white shirt with a red collar and blue pants, in reference to the ever-lovable bony boy Papyrus. Here's a purple shirt with the Delta Room symbol on it as well as white hair, in reference to Toriel, the motherly goat mom who you meet in the ruins. Here's a black shirt with blue pants and red hair, in reference to the ever-aggressive captain of the Royal Guard, Undyne. A yellow shirt with brown stripes and yellow hair, in reference to the monster kid you meet in Snowden. A pink shirt with machine-like patterns and black pants and hair, in reference to the entertainment murder bot, Metaton. And finally, a color where Frisk has blue skin, a black shirt with an armor pattern and black pants, in reference to Chris, the main character to Undertale's sequel, Delta Rune. For the stage entrance, it would start with a flower patch on the stage, and Frisk would fall from the sky landing into the patch, causing the flowers to scatter after they hit the ground. Then they'd get up and pick up the stick that's left behind after the flowers scatter, a clear reference at the beginning of Undertale when Frisk first falls into the underground. For the first taunt, Neutral mode will have Frisk hold the save light in their hands before it blinks out as they smile. Pacifist mode would have them hold the save light, but then pull it towards their chest while giving a more gentle smile. And genocide mode would have them hold the save light in one hand, but then crush it while giving a wicked smile. For the second taunt, neutral mode would quickly pull out a slice of Toriel's pie, and then quickly eat it. Pacifist mode would pull out a star fey, then quickly drink that. And genocide mode would pull out a snowman piece and scarf that down. Poor snowman. And for their third taunt, it would have Frisk's cell phone ring for all three modes. For neutral mode, they'll answer the phone, and you can hear Papyrus' sounds coming from it before they hang up. For pacifist mode, they would answer the phone but hear Toriel instead. And for genocide mode, they'd hear Flowey, but then smash the phone on the ground. And to end things off with the victory animations, the first animation would all start with Frisk looking at the mercy icon. Neutral mode would have Frisk select the mercy, but then select run, and then just run off screen. Pacifist Bow would select Mercy and then hit Spare, then give a big smile. And Genocide Bow would just slash the Mercy button in two, then give a more creepy smile. The second victory animation will all start with the camera panning towards Frisk. Neutral Frisk would turn around as the camera gets close, then lose their balance as they're startled by the camera and fall over. Pacifist Frisk would just turn around and do a pose as the camera gets close, and Genocide Frisk would quickly turn around and slash at the camera, causing the camera to back up. And finally, for the last victory animation, Neutral Frisk would be grabbed by Papyrus, who would then throw them into the air playfully, and then pose with Frisk on his shoulder. Pacifist Frisk would be thrown up and down into the air constantly by various characters from the Undertale series. Papyrus, Undyne, Alphys, and Toriel will all be the ones throwing them up. Sans will also be there, but he's just standing in the background watching. And as for Genocide Frisk, there is no friends. Just Frisk standing there alone, wiping dust off their shirts. They'll then look at the camera with a face eerily similar to Kara's jump scare face. Huh, that's a depressing way to end this off, but that does it for Frisk! I'm sure I could have gone way simpler for this character to make things easier on myself, but where's the fun in that? 
Undertale is a complicated game despite looking so simplistic, so I think that it's only appropriate that a possible Smash rep for Undertale would be treated just the same. In which case, if you'd like to see your favorite character be given a possible Smash moveset, leave a comment down below, or contact me on Twitter at brofan one on Twit. I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching!